The next issue we are raising, and I've already touched on it, is one that some would tell you is contentious. However, I'll tell you that it is my belief that in New Zealand there's a very clear consensus on this issue, but it is not what is that consensus is not what is driving current policy settings and government attitudes to the issue of transgenderism and the transitioning, in particular, of prepubescent children. For a clear campaign run by an outfit called Rainbow Youth, which has basically infected most of our schools and looks for children to target for the practice of transgendering them. For what warped and weird reason? I do not know. I am making clear my editorial position on this because I think it is an important issue and I need to make it clear where I stand. And I'm not saying that if people want to do stuff to their bodies, for goodness sake, we have a law now that you can kill yourself if you're terminally ill. Um, if you want to do stuff to your bodies when you're an adult, when you're over 18, knock yourselves out. But uh, transitioners, leave our kids alone. The rest of the world right now is learning the dire consequences of allowing um, super liberal um, groups into our schools the dangers of allowing this culture of transgenderism to be perpetrated on innocent children. Um, there are clinics being closed in Britain. There are bans on, in particular, the prescription of puberty blockers to children uh, being introduced around the world. But here in New Zealand, their use is increasing. And we are going against international trends. One group that has been speaking up about this for a while is the uh, women's uh, uh, rights advocacy group Speak Up For Women. And they're hosting very soon an online discussion with a Dr Michael Biggs this month. He's an associate professor of sociology at the University of Oxford about the issues the rest of the world is finding with the prescription of puberty blockers to children suffering from what used to be called gender dysphoria. And as I said, the UK, some states in America are taking uh, steps to ban, ban the use of puberty blockers, while New Zealand is going the other direction. Um, we've got a spokesman for uh, Speak Up for Women, Susan Levy, who joins us uh, now on the line. Uh, Suzanne, welcome to the programme. Thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you, Sean. Good morning. Good morning. Now, what is uh, what stats, what information do we have on the use of puberty blockers in New Zealand? What do the figures look like? We don't have a, a massive amount of information, um, but we know from, from Pharmac that the, um, there's been a, a massive increase over the last 10 years, probably tenfold in the numbers um, of, you know... Are we uh, able to extrapolate how many young people uh, in New Zealand right now might be subject to puberty blocking um, treatment? Well, in, in 2020, there were 703 prescriptions oh. from Pharmac. Um, 10 years earlier, there were 137. Uh, we can only guess what's happened in the, in the you know, last two years. But, you know, we, we're probably looking at, at another couple of hundred at least. Um, so yeah. it, it's, and these are nine, nine-year-olds to 17-year-olds. So this doesn't include... Uh, children who are taking puberty blockers for what they call precocious puberty, which is um, a sort of more of a medical condition where puberty starts really, really early. And, okay, you know, all right. So, yeah, so, so you're so saying that, it's about, a, somewhere yeah. over 700 young New Zealanders are taking yeah, uh, puberty yeah. blockers for the uh, express purpose of messing with their gender. Um, yes, uh, for the express, express person of um, of halting puberty or delaying some of the symptoms or I shouldn't say symptoms, some of the effects of puberty. Um, now most, in the UK what they found was the Tavistock clinic which is the NHS kind of version which of Which is now closed. Running, which is closed, yes. Um, is that you know almost all of those uh, kids went on to take cross-sex or opposite-sex hormones so it does put kids on a, on a path. It's the gateway drug. Uh, to being transgender. It's a gateway drug. Yeah, yeah, and I think, you know, kids are told it's the, it's the first step and they I think they're really were just waiting until they're old enough 
to be able to take cross sex okay. hormones. Well, do kids happen. tell you that, or do the people that have convinced the kids that they're transgender tell you that? Well, that's the thing that um, kids will tell you what they think you want to hear. So, if if kids are being told that the answer to their problem, um, their their social anxiety, their body issues, all of those things, if they're told that it's because they were born in the wrong body, which I think is a, a terrible thing to say to anybody, um, then they are. Going, they're going to look, as, look at the uh, puberty blockers as a, a saviour, as, as the answer to their, to their problem, and they're going to see it as, you know, it puts them into this sort of holding pattern while they wait to, to go on to the, um, oh. you know, the real drugs. So in, um, for a, a girl, <coughs> that's testosterone. Yeah. Uh, so... You know what would be interesting, and what the numbers we don't have are, you know, who who is taking them? Is it is it um, uh, girls taking these drugs, the puberty blockers, or boys, which is the most most common? Um, one thing they found with the Tavistock, they had a you know thousands of percentage increase over the last ten fifteen years, and it went from being mainly quite young boys who yeah. were wanting to transition um majority of the of the um kids were boys so i think 75 80 percent something or 75 yeah. percent something like that um and it's it's now switched and it's it's more yeah. girls yeah um it's almost the other other way and yeah and slightly sort of older as well if, so teenage yeah teenage girls yeah Susanna, I, I, I want to come back so if the rest of the world appears now to us saying whoops we made a mistake and rolling back transitioning why is new zealand bucking that trend i do not know and it, it surprises me every day that goes past that they don't start to look at what's going on we have been pointing out to them the changes that have been going on particularly in the uk because you know we do follow them for a lot of things and we should be we should be watching what's going on they have a you know a specialized clinic that um i guess an opportunity to actually see and collect information about what's going on um new zealand just doesn't seem to be interested we we have um <clears throat> the ministry of health for a long time had on their website that uh, puberty blockers were safe and were fully uh, safe and fully reversible and we hounded them and lots of people hounded them for quite a while about that wording um and in, in september this year they actually change the wording and they talk more about having to um, talk to a medical practitioner and they don't say that they're safe. Um, but when questioned by, um, I think, Radio New Zealand, they were they, they reiterated that they were in fact still safe and reversible. They consider them to be. There's a, um, there's a health um, a, a agency in, in New Zealand uh, called PAFA, which is a uh, professional association of transgender healthcare Aotearoa, and they get their guidelines from a world organisation of a similar name, and which is WPATH. And I think Ministry of Health take a lot of their guidance from from yeah. uh, PATH. And PATH are they're a transgender health organisation. Um, they're so they're a political uh, group rather uh, than a medical group. Uh, well, no, they're a medical group, but they're they're pretty. They seem to be fairly fairly biased. Um, they yeah. are puberty um, blockers reversible. Are puberty blockers reversible if you stop taking them? Um, mm -hmm. I, it depends how long you how long you take them for. That's the thing. There is there isn't the evidence. I can't I can't answer that. Is puberty blocking by international standards and transitioning the best treatment for gender dysphoria? No, is my is my answer to that. No, it is not. Most children with gender dysphoria will for want of a better phrase, they will grow out of it. Yeah. Um, you know, the best, the best treatment, in my opinion, um, is watchful waiting and yeah. gender expiration. But then again, like, Suzanne, you're not a medical expert, are you? I'm not. I'm not. I'm, not, I'm absolutely not a medical expert. Um, so, but you have to wonder at the number of, of children presenting and being given puberty blockers. Um and you know, do we really know what's going to happen to those kids? What what are the what are the outcomes ten years? Down yeah, the well, track? it always seems to me no. I've got to say that genital mutilation is a very strange cure for a medical or psychological condition mm. under any circumstances, whether it be about gender or anything else. Suzanne, mm. Suzanne, I want to know under the current laws in New Zealand, 
Um, can children under the age of 16 be prescribed puberty blockers without the knowledge of their parents or uh, uh, and permission of their parents? I think there's a um, there's a case cases where they can be because they're um, deemed to be able to consent. So I think that that would be a case by case basis, probably depending depending on the age. Yeah. Um, you know, I do I do know that there's um, you know there is there's a school in, a school a large school in the Hutt Valley um, here in Wellington who you know they have a, a support group where the older students talk to the younger students about such things. Um, you know, so there's information coming from all sorts of places for for young people. It must be an absolute minefield for them. Yeah. Um, and it's it's you know you know one of the things that um, speak up for women. Our, our kind of tagline is that sex matters, and so we say that um, you can, we we don't believe you can change your sex. It's it's fixed. Well, you can. So, you can't, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. like anyone yeah. with any ascaric of common sense, you can you can decide that you feel like something else and walk around pretending to be that, but you can't fundamentally change your sex, can you? Yeah, no, that's, that's absolutely right. And I think, um, you know, women um, in particular have got, um, we've got a lots, of, lots of freedom in how we express ourselves within. Uh, so, our look, don't, that we don't throw that at me, Suzanne. Men have got just as much freedom. They do. It's you a don't have any. Ab- you don't have any magical power that gives you more freedom for that than than I, I have. Well, maybe men give one another less freedom. I don't know. Well, I don't know. You know. There's no we're, medical we're, proof of yeah. that at all, Suzanne. Folks are folks. No, no. What I was, what I'm meaning is that for for women, we can dress in a huge and and, and sort of express ourselves in a very wide range oh, of ways. Okay. Yep. And and still and we still um no one sort of questions whether or not we're a woman or not. Yeah. Where with a, a man, if he puts on a, a bit of lippy and a skirt, he's immediately questioned. So we have a lot of a lot of scope. And I think it's probably a lot harder for men to be express themselves in gender diverse ways than yeah. than women. Um a woman can wear, you know, shorts and t-shirts all her life and she's still a woman it's yeah. not usually questioned um so it, it is a it's a tricky space but um i can't remember what i was talking yeah. about now but that's all um, right so suzanne yeah, this but, person you got uh, coming out this uh dr yeah. michael biggs what is michael biggs stuck and what are they going to be telling and talking about uh in this seminar thing so his his um live stream is entitled puberty blockers and the transgender revolution yeah. And he's mainly going to be talking about a thing that ended up being called the Dutch Protocol, which eventuated out of a study in the Netherlands to do with, it was a group of about 70 kids that went through puberty blockers, mm. um, what have you, quite quite some time ago in the, in the uh, 90s. Yeah. And, and basically the, the kind of start of that study has resulted in the way puberty blockers are prescribed today. So yeah. they were, it was, looked like a, a great, <clears throat> a great option and they pushed through. Yeah. And what's happened is that it hasn't ended up being that great and that no one stopped it. So his talk is about that, about that study and, or the Dutch protocol and, and you know, why, why it's flawed or why the results are flawed. Yeah. Um, and you know that that sort of thing, and and the um, yeah, the making of the transgender child, really, you know, where did yeah. that concept come well, from? And I was uh, looking at the figures you have talked about, right? Yeah. Either there has been some environmental or scientific reason for an increase in people with gender dysphoria who then transition, or this is a trend. This is a fashion. This is well, a cool well, thing one, to do yeah. because it can't be both. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think one of the cohorts that's really increased, which is why it'd be interesting to see the breakdown of the numbers here, is in teenage girls who yeah. weren't typically the the um, uh, the profile. Yeah. So we're talking about girls who weren't even they weren't necessarily even tomboys as as children. They were and sort of. It's sort of sitting in that same area as eating disorders and, and self-harm and that kind of thing. It's just a, sometimes it feels like it's just another way for young girls to hate their bodies. Yeah. Um, and they're, they're kind of coming, you know, so, so they come out as non-binary and they, and they, I, it feels to me like they want to be invisible. 
um, yeah. and then and then they sort of tran- some of them transition yeah. and start taking testosterone. Yeah. Uh, and you know that is that is irreversible. Yeah. And uh, so I'm wondering, in the UK, that group formed a significant number yeah. or a significant proportion of the of the um, yeah. young people taking puberty blockers and, and then yeah. cross sex hormones. Yeah. And I suspect it's the same here, but we don't have those numbers because I'm not, because I'm not available. Suzanne, um, you're, you're in groups like yours, of course, accused of being TERFs. Um, we look at what's happened to JK Rowling and the hatred expressed by extremists on the other side of the debate here. New Zealand, it would seem to me, is out of step with the rest of the world. We are lagging behind a world that has said, well, let's just slow down on this stuff. Is it your hope that, let's say, a change in government, for example, might change attitudes on this in New Zealand? Um, I honestly don't know. I'm, personally, I'm, I've always been a Labour voter, but um, like your guest yesterday, I would find it very hard at the moment. Um, but I think all, in, all a change in government might do is slow things down, um, Hopefully, hopefully enough. But e- even then, they might not slow things down. You know, national aren't speaking out on this either. No, um, that, yeah, and but, that's sort of like a whole lot of things. Chris Luxon just sits yeah, there like a lump of vanilla on top of a, a cone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, if there was a, a political party that came out and said, "We know what a woman is. We want to protect our children. We don't, you know, we don't believe we, we believe in sex. We believe sex is real." Um, and it can't be changed. Um, you'd, I think you'd, a lot you'd of know where to go. Would be really glad of that. Yeah, yeah. Suzanne, when um, is the online seminar for for, so for the, the good oh, doctor? The online uh, live stream is on the first of December. It's at seven o'clock at night, um, and you can get. We, we are we are charging a small amount for tickets. Um, yeah. Registration is on our website, speakupforwomen.nz. Um, if you want to come, we want as many people to, to see it as possible, uh, yeah. as well as sort of covering some of our costs. Yeah. But if you, um, it will be available afterwards as well, but you yeah. won't be able to um, take okay. part in the questions and answers. Yeah, so go to our website, um, register. If you really want to go and you're an educator or a, a, in the medical field or a parent and you're concerned and you really want to go and you can't afford the, the ticket, then flick us a message um, via our website and we'll see what we can do. Hey, that's great, Suzanne. I thank you for your time this morning. Really interesting and I think important uh, discussion to have. I thank you very much indeed. That is Suzanne Levy uh, from Speak Up For Women. Really interesting discussion on puberty blockers and global trends and, and it is a trend, isn't it? It's a woke trend, transgenderism.